From taking more exercise to participating in mass and competitive sports, Singaporeans are taking to sports in an active lifestyle more than ever before. And more could be on the way with additional funding for new sporting facilities and yesterday's launch of Active CG, a new national movement for sports. But are we prepared? In this week's Spotlight, Leong Wai Kit looks at preparation and safety for the sporting Singaporean. It's easy to find places for sporting activities here in Singapore. But before we get active, it's always important for you to get your doctor's advice before we hit the ground running. I think when a person says he is very healthy, if they've not gone for a health check, then you really need to take a huge pinch of salt. Because um, a lot of things don't actually show symptoms until it's very late or very severe. Unless you have very comprehensive cardiac clearance and everything has been normal, I would, I would advise people to actually be very careful when they start exercising, even if they have been uh, triathlete all their life. Dr. Lim says there's no data to show just how many people visit their doctors before they start exercising. They will usually ask their GPs or their, you know, usually family doctor and say, Oh, you know, uh, can I exercise? But generally, they don't come in asking for a clearance in that sense, in a very sport-specific or event-specific clearance. But some definitely do. Like a 34-year-old teacher, Husna Wati, who's warming up to the idea of returning to an active lifestyle after nearly 20 years. Zumba is a must every Tuesday and then we I also do um, slow walk and hopefully the target is to finish my 10 kilometers run uh, by the end of April. <laughs> yes, in one piece. <laughs> and to do that? Um, the first thing I did was to tell my doctor how, how unfit I was. I told him that I have been out of exercise for many, 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 many years. Um, so in the end, he referred me to the hospital where we did some simple checkup. One incident close to my heart was my husband's uh, uncle. He passed away while playing golf. During the post-mortem, we found out that it was more of a heart attack. So it scares me because you never know what health issues you have. Getting your health checked is therefore a good first step to ensure it's safe to start exercising. But Singaporeans are also getting serious in mass events as well. Over the years, more races have been organised in Singapore. In 2008, there were about 14 running races. This year, there will be at least 48. Another sign that more are taking running in their stride? Participation numbers in the annual year-end marathon. It started with some 6,000 runners in 2002. Almost a decade later, the number surged to some 65,000, a tenfold increase. But before you take part in your first mass event, what specific preparations and safety issues should you be aware of? When you're doing mass races particularly, there are other individuals running with you from different walks of life, um, different training, different ability levels. So it's also to take note of the people around you. There are a lot of runners they like to put on headphones. So it's also to make sure that you're able to hear, to know that people are running past you, people are behind you. Um, just a lot of being, I think, aware. It's a little bit of social awareness when you're going into mass events. People tend to want to be in front, um, but they're actually a slower runner. So a lot of times they cause actually safety issues because the fastest runner are faster runners are trying to get around them and then that's they're blocking the space. So it's a little bit like a road hop. That's where sometimes accidents can happen. And there can be blind spots among serious runners as well. 41-year-old Roger Lim is a seasoned marathoner who can run 42 kilometers in about three and a half hours. The timing for top marathoners is about two hours. Two years ago, Mr. Lim and his running buddy Henry Lee did a 17 kilometer race. It's only after, I think after about 10, about more than half, half of the route, I, I slowed down quite a fair bit. So I, I, I continued to run. 
Then I think about uh, 14 over kilometers. I think I still try to push to finish the race. I, I, that's, that's the main objective of the race. So I still want to finish the race. So, so, but I don't know why all of a sudden I just collapsed. Looking back, Mr Lim says it was lack of sleep before the race that caused him to faint. I've been running with him for quite some time now. It wasn't his usual pace of, of breath. He was, his face was flushed. Usually when he runs, it, 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 you know, it, he's very consistent, but he was panting, his face was flushed, his lips were a little bit blue. It was surprising at the, he, he fell. Like, usually it was me who, usually it's the, he's the one who is pacing me. I mean, I, I'm usually the slower one. Mr Lim says he's also learned not to be overconfident when preparing for races. The same level of awareness should also apply to those doing other forms of high-intensity sports such as triathlons. Some people can swim consistently well in the pool, but that doesn't always mean they can do equally well in the sea. Now, there are many factors to consider in open water swimming. For example, waves can easily sweep you off course. Plus, you can't always see clearly while swimming in open water. But perhaps what's most crucial is, not many people are mentally and physically prepared to swim with many people in close proximity during races like triathlons. And that can cause panic while they're in water. The key thing that they don't do though is that they forget to actually exhale. They're so busy trying to uh, take a uh, breath uh, that they forget to act actually exhale. You may get a little kick in the face, not deliberately of course. Your goggles may fill with water, it, just something that's kind of out, in the, out of the ordinary. You haven't been in that situation before. You think you've got it under control, but that's enough just to set that panic off. In just two years, Mr Wood has seen 50% more triathlon clients. Apart from training tips, they learn the safety aspects of the sport. For swimming, Mr Wood says it's all about being confident and relaxed. And for those of you who cycle, whether or not in a triathlon, he had some advice as well. Safety on the bike really is anticipation. You know, know, know the equipment, know how to change gear, know how to brake, know how to corner, know how to ride with a group. A lot of bike riders aren't looking forward. You know, they, they spend their time fixating on maybe the wheel in front or maybe the rider there or maybe sometimes a car there. I mean, there's a very simple rule in, in, in cycling. If you're looking at something, that's pretty much what you're going to hit. As we grow to be a more sporting nation, maybe it's not just about being active or keeping fit, but also how to do so safely for ourselves and for those around us.